We were talking about that that warrior transition to youth. Joe Lake of acknowledging major overhaul in the offseason. Not sure what they're going to do with Andrew Wiggins, but Rick Bucher probably has a better feel. He joins us live. So I, yesterday afternoon, I'm at the gym, and a buddy of mine is a Warrior fan, and he goes, have you heard? Clay's not starting, and he's not hurt. And I'm like, uh-oh, here we go. Yeah. And uh, then there's the couple, yeah. ga- couple games ago, Clay was a little salty with Steph Curry, so I would imagine you know the organization well. This is predictably hard, right? Clay's a good guy, but it's hard. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's it's hard because, uh, I mean, let's face it, where the Warriors are, they're 10th right now in the Western Conference. And Steve Kerr is trying to find a way to get the most out of this team just to make the playoffs, not seeding, simply to qualify. And so egos, reputations, feelings, all that is out the window at this point. Don't forget, like Andrew Wiggins was was benched uh, earlier in the season as well. We don't expect that from Clay, and because historically it's the first time that uh, he's come off the bench since he was a rookie, that's what makes it stand out. But the reality is, if Steve's going to get the most out of everybody on this team, and Clay's able to score 35 going up against other teams' second unit, and they're able to eke out a win, and keep in mind, they were still eking out a win against Utah then that's ultimately what they are going to do. And I would say that this is also a little bit of a, uh, a primer for what they are going to offer him contractually this summer. Yeah. I know that Joe Lacob is not wed to keeping Clay Thompson. He tried to trade him once before. But from the organization standpoint, from Draymond and uh, Steph's uh, position, They'd like to keep the big three together. So the Warriors went after LeBron. It kind of felt Draymond created. Uh, It felt like a little bit of a video game trade. If I'm LeBron, listen, we're hot. We won the in-season tournament. We're hot now. We have NBA championship length. We actually match up very well with Boston and Denver. Milwaukee's falling apart. If I was the Lakers, I'd be like, I don't think think we're going to win the title. But I don't want a bunch of 19-year-old draft yeah. picks and bad expiring contracts. Like, I wouldn't have made it if I was the La- – I got the Warriors wanting it. I get that. I don't get the Lakers right. wanting to move off LeBron. That was my take. What's yours? I, this was – LeBron didn't want to go anywhere. I don't, even, I don't know where the Lakers were, but we never got there because LeBron is not leaving L.A. Well, regardless, uh, they're going to draft Bronny James or they're going to pick him up uh, undrafted, and uh, and that's how this show is going to continue. Uh, the mistake made here by the Warriors is the fact that they should have known that LeBron isn't going anywhere. And this wasn't the Lakers exploring it. It wasn't even the Warriors exploring it. It was owner Joe Lacob exploring it because he's got this idea that he's – the smartest guy in the room and he's always going to show you I'm thinking out of the box and I will do anything to win. The problem is, is that there are ways to back channel this. There's ways to find out what, where LeBron stands. Would he ever even consider it? And when you get the answer, which everybody in the league knew was no, he doesn't want to, he he doesn't want to go to help Steph. He don't want to go to Steph's house and help him win another championship. Uh, If he wants to do anything, he wants to do it in LA and he wants to ultimately retire a Laker. And so the problem that I have with this being explored and then doing it in a way that it public, publicly gets out is that you knew it wasn't going to happen for the Warriors. And now you have guys in that locker room looking around going, OK, Joe is willing to trade for LeBron. Which one of us was, <laughs> or which ones, ones of us? We're going in exchange for it. And you create a potential problem in your locker room that you didn't need to have. And one of the things that has been a hallmark of these Warriors and the reason that they've kept the big three together and been so successful is their chemistry. And you're sort of messing with that. And should have said this when you asked me the earlier question about rebuilding. If the Warriors were truly smart, they would have started the rebuilding process right after the 2022 championship. Because that's when Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins and Klay Thompson coming back from those injuries, 
all those guys were at the high water mark of their value. And you had to know that it wasn't going to stay that way based on the history of those players. That's ultimately where they missed. So now they're playing from behind. They're going to rebuild. They're going to start over. But it's not going to be nearly as successful as it might have been if they had started it after 2022. Uh, we said this. Um, I, I, I have been, I think, kind of tough on the Lakers and a bit of a cynic. But I've got a year straight of Anth yep. Anthony Davis being really healthy and a dominant defensive player, a little inconsistent offensive side, but on any night he can drop 28. LeBron's still a top 10 offensive yep. player if you count distribution, leadership, IQ, and scoring. Austin Reeves a three. I made the argument yesterday they have championship length. What they miss is if D'Lo wasn't so squirrely, if he gave you 18 a night, but one mm. night he's got 17 assists, two turnovers, the next night three yeah. assists, three turnovers, that if he was consistent with Austin, AD, yeah. LeBron, and their length, I'm like, you know, if Jamal Murray got banged up or Gordon, they could give Denver problems. I think they're a good team, not great. Is that yeah. fair going into the All-Star break? Very fair. And you, D'Lo is, is at the heart of this. And this is, this is what troubles me. If D'Lo plays this way, the way he's playing, I look at them and I think, you know what? If they allow physicality in the postseason, because that's how they essentially won the, the NBA Cup. Yes, it they is. They just beat yeah. the stuffings out of the Pacers. If they allow the, play, the Lakers to be physical, then their experience can win out. And a lot of these teams that simply are good and talented and at the top of the uh, the charts, Oklahoma City being uh, first and foremost there, then I can see the Lakers winning out against them. This is the problem that I have with counting on D'Angelo Russell. And he just said it in explaining why he's suddenly become what he has been since the trade deadline or when the trade rumor started with him. He goes, I'm best when I don't think. And I'm like, you know what? That's a regular season player. Because <laughs> if you're just in the flow during the regular season, you can have great games. You get to the postseason, you have to think. You have to be calculated. You have to make really good decisions. Otherwise, they kill you in the postseason. So that's where I'm like, what are the chances that I'm going to see this D'Angelo Russell when it comes to the playoffs? the chances are not very high. And if I don't, then I don't see the Lakers going as far as their recent performances might suggest. So um, yesterday, Doc Rivers said, yeah, some of our guys were in Cabo. So when, when, when Ty Lue had to kind of move the deck chairs with James Harden, get Westbrook to the bench, a real yeah. adult move by Westbrook, it was awful for about five, six games. I watched them on about mm -hmm. six straight games. In fact, I talked to Lawrence Frank about this. I saw him one night and I said, man, did I miss on this? And he said, you know, Ty convinced these guys, guys, y'all got money. Y'all got, let's go win games. This is a good team. And the Clippers yeah. to me are, I give Ty Lue coach of the year. I think they're a handful. They even have some bench scoring, some size, the bucks. I thought the Dame Giannis thing would work. It's a mess with doc rivers. Should I be patient? Yeah. Or do you think there's real trouble here? I felt that there was trouble from the minute that they traded Drew Holiday. This is a team that came into the league, uh, came into the season, the oldest team in the league, and having issues being able to defend on the perimeter. And what did they do? They traded away their best perimeter player and second best defensive player overall. So I, 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 getting Doc was not going to be the solution. I don't even believe that the Bucks felt that that was the solution. They just felt that Adrian Griffin wasn't going to be able to get them there. And let's roll the dice and bring in a veteran coach who has a championship ring. When you looked around the, the, what the options were, Doc presented himself to them as the best option. But let's not get this twisted, okay? The Milwaukee Bucks did not trade for Damian Lillard because they thought that it would get them closer to winning a championship. They traded for Damian Lillard because Giannis Antetokounmpo made it known that I will sign an extension if you trade for Damian Lillard. 
So that's why they made the deal, and they were hoping that it would work out and that they could still be competitive, and depending on what happened in the East, the East being wide open, that uh, they still might be able to take a run at a championship. But the, the, the mindset of the Bucks organization was not, oh, Dame is the missing piece. Dame is going to carry us there. And this is nothing against Damian Lillard, but moving off of Drew Holiday, uh, that was a step back for them as far as their championship hopes. And I believe that the Milwaukee Bucks knew that as well as anybody else. Wow. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.